Good evening, everybody, and um, just love to add my own welcome. My name is Emily Lazell, and I lead this church alongside my husband, Martin, who you met earlier. I wonder what you are hoping for for Christmas. Um, perhaps it's uh, to receive a particular gift, or perhaps it's to not receive a particular gift. Um, do you have like an unwanted annual inevitable um, Martin and I have been married for 24 years, and um, every year he has bought me Ferrero Rocher. And um, I plucked up the courage last year um, just to sort of say to him that, uh, I mean, he's very kind, so I had to do it sort of quite gently to say, well, actually, though I don't dislike Ferrero Rocher, they're not actually my favorite chocolate, you know, like the Christmas chocolate treat. So um, to be really honest, I'm hoping that I don't get Ferrero Rocher this year, but I am hoping that I get Bendix Bittermints. That's okay, rather partial to those. Perhaps this Christmas you're hoping to see um, a specific friend or family, or again, maybe you're hoping not to see a specific family, I, I, I don't know. Um, or perhaps you're hoping for just for time, time out of the usual routine of life, time off maybe from work, time to enjoy the things that make Christmas Christmas for you, whether that's Christmas films or um, chocolate for days, whether it's enjoying the dulcet tones of Michael Buble, the amazing range of Mariah Carey on repeat, whatever that might mean for you. Or maybe it's time to uh, reflect. Maybe you're, you're hoping for time to pause, to process and ponder on the year that's passed. The Cambridge Dictionary announced that their word of the year is hallucinate, related to um, the increased use of AI and the challenge that we have now trying to decipher whether things are true or false, whether things are real or fake. And uh, tonight, I wonder, as we ponder through the readings that we've heard and the songs that we've sung, what do you make of Christmas? What do you make of the Christmas story? Is it in the same box as the Christmas decorations that we get out every year and then put away again? Does it sit alongside the fictitious stories told in pantomimes up and down the country at this time of year? Or is this Christmas story, is it different? Is it the truest of true stories? Is it, in fact, reality? And can we find true hope within it? This story is set 2,000 years ago, not on a beautifully lit stage, but with the backdrop of the Jewish people being ruled by the oppressive Roman Empire. And that very first scripture reading that we had from Isaiah is just one of over 300 prophecies um, in the Old Testament about Jesus, the Messiah, the Savior, who was come to set people free. And Isaiah's prophecy, that particular scripture, was, was 700 years before Jesus' birth. And God has spoken through other prophets since that time. But up until Jesus' birth, There'd been silence. There'd been no new word from God for 400 years. I wonder, you know, whether Jewish people were not only oppressed at the time in the birth of Jesus, but not only maybe depressed, but hopeless, hopeless in the midst of having 400 years of silence. And the silence is, um, is an unhealthy thing in a in a relationship, you know, in an unhealthy relationship, silence can be used as a punishment, you know, ghosting and things like that. But God doesn't ghost. God doesn't sulk. On the contrary, silence can be used as a quite a powerful tool, a powerful tool in communication. Um, it helps create suspense and it emphasizes a point, something important. In fact, studies have shown that taking a pause before a key statement can increase the impact of your words by up to 85%. I might try that with my children. I wonder, was God signaling to something coming that is of immense importance as a result of this silence? And of course, silence does not mean absence. Just because God wasn't speaking doesn't mean that God wasn't working. 
You know, at times, Martin and I will sit now, we've got our Christmas decorations up, we'll sit just staring in silence, looking at the Christmas tree. Uh, it's white lights, carefully coordinated decorations in white and silver with, I think, an appropriate and tasteful touch of red, not too much. And uh, over the years, we've got four sons, over the years, I have trained them to decorate the tree uh, just the way it should be decorated. You know, I've trained them to consider the, um, the colors and coordinating the size of the baubles, the ornaments, ornaments being appropriately positioned on the tree. And we think it looks lovely. We think it looks beautiful. Um, it's a real tree. And uh, the truth is, it does look great. But it is a hallucination of health. It is actually only giving the perception of life. Because in a month's time, the tree will actually be brown and brittle because it's being cut off from its roots. But beyond the trees in our homes, I wonder, do our Christmas celebrations have roots? A once blessed, flourishing nation is now described, as we heard read in Isaiah chapter 11, as a stump. When my family and I first moved to London, we went to Richmond Park. I love Richmond Park. And I remember on our very first visit, uh, the children, we all got out of the car. We literally crossed the car park. And then straight away, one of my sons fell over, fell to the ground. He stumbled over a rotten tree stump. And he got himself a really nasty black eye. An unidentified stump can cause us to stumble. But the stump that Isaiah speaks of has roots. It has life and truth, a promise of hope. This stump holds the promise of Jesus. Winston Churchill said of his predecessor, Baldwin, occasionally he had stumbled over the truth, but hastily picked himself up and hurried on as if nothing had happened. In much the same way, many have stumbled over Jesus and his claim as the truth and then hurry on as if nothing had happened. Isaiah prophesies of Jesus. He says, a shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From its roots, a branch will bear fruit. The true story of Christmas is rooted in Jesus. The branch he's described of, the light, a saviour, to save us from walking in darkness, both the inner darkness of our own selfishness, our own pride, and also to be with us, Emmanuel, God with us, when life feels darkness around us. The reality of God came in the form of humanity. Mighty God, veiled in flesh, as the carol writer puts it, Not as some impressive Chris Hemsworth, Thor-type character wielding uh, an axe. It's a hammer, isn't it? Is it a hammer or an axe? Did he do both? I can't remember. It's a hammer. Wielding a hammer of worthiness. But he came as a vulnerable baby, born to an insignificant teenage virgin, in a very unimpressive venue, in an unimportant town, a baby who went from the wood of the manger to the wood of the cross to save us. Hope is not wrapped in a box under the Christmas tree, but rooted in Jesus, who was first wrapped in a manger and then wrapped in a tomb, so that in his death and resurrection, we might be forgiven and found worthy before God. And tonight, are there areas, I wonder, of your life that look like a stump right now? Maybe your relationship, work or lack of it, your health, your finances. Well, tonight, the message of Christmas is not about the shiny, sparkly areas of your life. The message of Christmas is that there is hope for the places where you feel stumped. Unrooted, the spirit of Christmas is sentimental and it's seasonal. But the spirit of Christ, the Lord, is supernatural and eternal. So as we celebrate, as we do all our Christmassy things this season, may the true story of Christmas take root in our hearts, just 
as the shoot from the stump of Jesse brought new life, let this season be a reminder that even in the seemingly barren areas of our life, there's potential for growth and renewal. The Christmas story is one of hope, that from silence and a stump can come singing and a saviour. And as we navigate the inevitable uncertainties of life, may the silent moments be filled with the powerful promise of Emmanuel, God with us, the wonderful counsellor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Amen.